Hi there, I'm Luke and this is my video on simulation-based optimization on the cloud. Simulation-based optimization is a technique that has already been successfully applied to many real-world applications, such as vaccine schedule optimization and cancer treatment. Unfortunately, simulations are very computationally expensive, which thus leads to long running time. Wouldn't it be great if there was a cost-effective solution to improving the speed of simulation-based optimization? Of course there is. In today's digital age, many advancements in technology has allowed us to achieve higher throughput through distributed cloud computing. As it has become more mainstream, the cost has also been driven lower. One consequence of this popularity is also the growth of containerization. By using the cloud computing solution, we ensure that containerization is also natively supported. Some benefits of cloud computing are the lower barriers to entry. For instance, consumers do not require on-premise infrastructure, which used to require large amounts of capital. Next, there are few constraints that developers have to be aware of when creating applications on the cloud. This was very different when virtual machines were the main mode of deployment, and developers had to tailor each deployment to the VM tied to it. With all these said, we come to the solution to the problem, our own simulation-based optimization engine. This is a cloud-native solution that works seamlessly with containers. Through cloud computing, we are able to effectively parallelize the optimization task, leading to great improvements in throughput. I will now run you through how it works. Simulation-based optimization predominantly relies on genetic algorithms. As such, we will be covering how our engine works from the context of genetic algorithms. This entails generating populations, then running simulations on the populations which can be viewed as inputs. Consequently, we determine if convergence has been met. To do this, we have an aggregation and simulation component in our engine. Pause the video here for a more in-depth understanding of this process. Next, we cover what the two kinds of simulations that are supported by an engine. Firstly, we have the simulations that can run simulations indefinitely. While more performant due to the long-lived nature, it is less flexible. Next, we have standalone simulations which terminate after running a single simulation. This means that for an entire optimization task, many more standalone simulations would be needed than if server simulations were used. However, Using standalone simulations has benefits such as allowing users to use pre-containerized simulations in a plug-and-play fashion. There are three com core components to the SBO engine, the orchestrator, the worker pool, and lastly the communication interface. Aggregation and population generation are handled by the orchestrator. This was created using the PyMove framework. The worker pool is created and handled by using Kubernetes. And in our experiments, we achieved this using the Azure cloud service. Lastly, the communication interface allows communication between the aggregator and the workers. This was created using Kubernetes mechanisms such as Kubernetes services and persistent volumes. This architecture allows us to make use of cloud technology to parallelize the simulations. For the standalone simulations, parallelism is achieved by creating multiple workers during each generation. These workers then take in the input generated by the orchestrator and performs the computationally heavy tasks to completion. The workers are then terminated and the results from the simulations are fed to the orchestrator and checked for convergence. If convergence is not met, a new generation will be created and the process is repeated. This is largely similar for the server simulations. However, the main difference lies in the existence of a worker pool. At the start, the orchestrator only creates new inputs and does not worry about creating workers. The newly generated inputs then are allocated to existing workers and simulations are performed to completion. After this, convergence is checked. Thus, we see that the main difference and performance benefit come from not having to instantiate multiple workers each generation, as this is a very time-intensive task. I am proud to say that the engine has achieved great improvements in runtime, and it was found that the server simulations naturally had a much better throughput due to the reasons mentioned earlier. Lastly, I would like to cover challenges that were faced during this project. 
The main challenge stemmed from initially using Argo framework as the foundation for our engine. Although the framework promised a plug-and-play solution with existing simulation containers, there were challenges that made it suboptimal. These included the difficulty in encoding the problem using genome type mappings, and the type of algorithm to use, and more configuration-based issues. These, this led to the creation of the engine with base Kubernetes, enabling users to input as much custom configures, configurations as they would need. In the end, we were able to create a highly customizable system that works very well.